in this section we're doing an extra example for a CDF and PDF and kind of working with the two. And the biggest thing you need to keep track of here is you need to remember what are you starting with. So in this case we're starting with a CDF, which you can also tell because this is a capital F that tells us it is the CDF. Okay, or in other words, remember our CDF, f of y, tells us the probability that y is less than, that's how you need to write it like this, y is less than or equal to our specific little value y. Remember we always do this uppercase level, uppercase letter for our like unknown and the y little one will always be like our specific value that we're interested in. So our CDF is y to the 3 halves over 8, and our y is defined from 0 to 4, and that means we do not care about anything outside of that range of 0 to 4. So 1, use the CDF to find the probability that y is between negative 2 and 3.6. Now, this is really the probability. So this says start at negative 2, but we only care about things between 0 and 4. So 0 is less than or equal to y is less than 3.6. Now, does it make a difference if this is a less than or a less than or equal to? It doesn't make a difference for continuous problems. And anytime you have a CDF, that stands for a cumulative distribution function. It's by nature something that is continuous. Okay. So we want to find this probability, and we already know our CDF, which is cumulative properties, or it already tells us probabilities that y is less than or equal to some number. So whenever you start with your CDF and you want to find the probability between two numbers, you just do the CDF of the big number minus CDF of the smaller number. Okay. So super easy. CDF of the big number is going to be 3.6 to the 3 halves power over 8 minus 0 to the 3 halves power over 8. So CDF of the big number minus CDF of the small number gives me 0.8538. Okay. Now my next one, I want to find the probability density function. So we are looking to go from a CDF, which we already have, to a PDF. And to go from a CDF to a PDF, you just take the derivative. So our PDF, or little f of y, is going to be equal to the derivative of our CDF, or capital F of y, just like when you're doing calculus. Our capital letter was always the integral, or if you want to get to a lower le letter, lo lowercase letter, you always did the derivative. Okay, so we take the derivative of this y to the 3 halves over 8. So when you take the derivative, the 1 eighth can stay the same. And then we have our y. You drop the power by 1, so 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. And times by your old power, which is 3 out of 16 times y to the 1 half. So we got 3 16 times y to the 1 half as our PDF. Or if you prefer, you could say 3 out of 16 times the square root of y. Now, it was only defined originally for y between 0 and 4, so it will still only be defined for y between 0 and 4. Your bounds stay the same when you change from a PDF to CDF. And number 3, use the PDF to find the probability of x. Oh, we're not dealing with x's, we're dealing with y. Let's change that. Is between 1.2 and 3. So if you want to find the PDF to find probabilities, let's go back and look at our previous page for those formulas. So PDF to probabilities, you have to integrate. So if you want the probability between A and B, you integrate with the bounds of A and B. So let's go back. So the probability, the Y is between 1.2 and 3, is going to be equal to the integral from 1.2 to 3 of our PDF. Now in this case, our PDF is th 3 out of 16 times the square root of y, dy.
To integrate this, it's probably easier to remember that this is y to the power of 1 half. The 3 16 stays there. Now with your y, you raise the power by 1, so 1 half plus 1 is 3 half, and you divide by your new power. And we will evaluate this from 1.2 to 3. Okay, now 3 16 divided by 3 halves should give us 1 8 y to the 3 halves evaluated from y equals 1.2 to 3. So this gives me 1 8 times 3 to the 3 halves minus 1 8 times 1.2 to the 3 halves, which is 0.4 eight, five,